It's nice to be here in a wonderful uh, Pasadena. I myself uh, don't live in Pasadena. I live in Santa Monica. That's where I come from, yeah, Santa Monica. Uh, and for those of y'all who don't know what Santa Monica is like, I'll try to explain it to you. Santa Monica is a nice little beach community where homeless people and interracial couples go to live in peace, Santa Monica. <laughs> so if you're a homeless, interracial couple, Santa Monica, fantastic place you live, really is. Got it set up real nice for you there. Got a very, very strict non-staring ordinance for our homeless, because you need it, you know. Go to Santa Monica, you see our homeless, you'll stare at them because they look fucking fantastic. Just <laughs> do not feel bad for people who decide to be down and out in Santa Monica. Don't feel bad. They doing good. We got uppity homeless people. That's how good the neighborhood is. Homeless people who will not take spare change. Do not offer them spare change. They won't take it. <laughs> offer the guy some spare change. He's like, uh, you got any extra dollars? Which kind of threw me off. Extra dollars? You mean, do I have any dollars? Don't go to the rest of my dollars? No, I have no extra dollars. By the time my change becomes a dollar, I keep that, right? That's how you keep from being homeless. Keep all the real money, get away to change, right? I don't want to be like him, you know, give away all my money. He'll have my house before it's over with, right? Come on. All oh, folks just lighten up. This is a comedy show. Come on. This is all jokes and shit. Look at me like I made the people homeless. I'm just joking. <laughs> this is all jokes. It's some shit I observed and I talked about it. That's what's going on here. It's all an act. Just keep that in mind. I'm not even black. I'm short and Asian. I'm not even young. I just put this whole outfit on because I think it's funnier. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, this is a, a, the Laugh Lounge show. I don't know if you know that. Not. We're going to be streaming live comedy uh, throughout comedy clubs, places like this all over the world. So that's what you're being involved in right here. I got some very, very funny comedians coming up after myself. But I'd just like to talk to you for a little bit because, you know, a lot of things have been bothering me just in my life. You know, I, I drink too much coffee. Anybody else? Coffee? Yeah. If I go to another coffee shop and the barista says to me, room for cream, like they're doing me a favor, I'm going to lose it room for cream. Like, we don't know what that means. Room for cream means less room for coffee. Yeah. Less room for the $5 cup of coffee that you're paying for. Damn baristas getting all in your business. Room for cream. What businesses are theirs, if you want cream or not? I want to tell them, you, you, you just pour the coffee. You let me worry about the cream. How do I take my coffee full? That's how I take it. That's what their job is. To come between you and a full cup of coffee. The damn baristas are ruled by the caffeine mafia. La Cafe Nostra, that's right. You didn't know it was a caffeine mafia, did you? La Cafe Nostra. They're out there running the whole coffee business. That's why coffee just keeps going up and nobody says nothing about it. People scared of the caffeine mafia. They won't say nothing about it. Just price just going up. Oh, that's all right, it's fine. I'll pay another nickel, pay another 20 cents. Venti coffee. Why do you need 20 ounces of any fluid if you ain't bathing in it? Why? <laughs> 20, 20 ounces of coffee. It's ridiculous. Coffee, most expensive damn fluid on the planet. Nobody complains about it. People complain about everything else. You know, gasoline is almost $4 a gallon. Coffee is $58 a gallon, people. Wake the hell up. <laughs> we in the middle of a caffeine shakedown. Will somebody say something? Any baristas here? I'm very suspicious of these baristas, you know. Out there acting like they're doing some good work. Banging and hissing, pss, 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 making all that damn noise. <laughs> That's all they do. They're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. All these questions. What's your name? My name? Caramel Macchiato. That's my name. Pour my coffee. <laughs> the hell you got to know my name for? You know I'll be back tomorrow. Got me hooked on this shit. Just pour the coffee. Let me get out of here. I'm so irritated. Comes with age, that's what it is. I'm getting older. Just had a birthday. I just turned 57. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's nice. You know, I told a woman how old I was. She said, you look good for your age. Which sounds like a compliment till you start to remember that people used to just say you look good, period. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> I don't like the modified compliment. Doesn't sound too complimentary. And for your age, this has no place in a compliment. A compliment should end with the most complimentary phrase in that sentence. That's a proper compliment. You look good, Mario, period. That's the end of the compliment right there. Like I didn't say to her, that dress fits you nice for someone your size. I didn't say that. <laughs> yes, because we can all hear it. That's not a compliment. That's a compliment slash insult, a compliment song. That's what that is. Something made famous by the French, I guess. A compliment song. But I love being in my 50s. I do. You know, I used to think this was old when I was younger, you know? Like when I was in my 30s. I used to think 50 was just, oh, it's just terribly old. You're almost dead. But I love it. It's my, <laughs> it's my favorite decade. I love it. I'm feeling good in my 50s. I love everything about it except getting a checkup. Because for some reason, when a man turns 50, doctors want to give you very, very thorough checkups. 
Every year, my doctor insists I get a prostate exam. And I don't like doing it because I'm not really comfortable with this instrument of examination. I can't believe in the year 2019, they still use the finger to examine the prostate. Have there been no medical advances in that area? Why are doctors, smart people, using their finger for anything? This is not an instrument, ladies and gentlemen. This is your finger. By now, they should have a machine where you just back up for like a second. Oh, is that what that is? Well, that was the Prostate 2000, Mr. Jordan. That's what that was. We developed that so we could stop using our finger. Doctor shouldn't be touching you with his finger. The only thing the doctor should do with his finger is swipe through the app that gives him results of the test. That's all. There should be an app for that. That's right. They got an app for everything else. You know, bending over or awkward, silent moments at the doctor's office. This is nonsense. This is ridiculous. They have laser eye surgery. You realize they can perform surgery on your eye with a laser. Have you home that day? Laser in your eye. Prostate exam. Finger. <laughs> These two procedures should not be performed in the same century, let alone the same hospital. I see there's no men in their 50s here, so it doesn't really resonate with you. But, ugh, my doctor, man. I, I kind of block it out every year. Once a year I go, I block it out, and I go, I almost successfully block it out so well that sometimes I'll get up off the table and just start walking out. The doctor has to stop Mr. John, and we still have to do it. He never says anything comforting. Just relax, Mr. John. You know I am a doctor, which, by the way, means nothing to me. I'm like, so you're a doctor. My ass has no idea that's an educated finger. I can't tell. <laughs> educated finger, uneducated finger, just as uncomfortable. Okay, I'll stop talking about it, but it's just, it's just a thing that bugs me <laughs> as a man in his 50s, you know. I want to figure that shit out myself. What else is going on out there? 57 years old, never married, no kids. That's what you're looking at. That's right. I'm tired of my married friends trying to pretend that they're in a better situation than me. Married people are crazy. They're trying to brainwash you into thinking that they're having a better time than you. It's impossible. You can't have a better time than me. I have no kids. I have no wife. Do you know what I have to do when I leave here? Absolutely nothing. That's what I have to do. I can fucking stay down here if I want to. My married friend's so jealous, they try to convince me that I made a mistake. You know, they always act like they pity me, too. Well, Mario, how come you're not married? I'm like, I don't know. Just trying to stay happy, I guess. I've seen the look of happily married people. I don't like the look. I'm not getting down on you if you're married. If you're married, enjoy that. But that was your choice. Stop player hating on your single friends. I'm trying to make single people think they did something so terrible by not getting married. My one friend, I can't even talk to him now because I may say the wrong thing. I can't talk to married people freely because in my lifestyle, I may say something that just pisses them off. Like one day I was talking to a friend of mine who has a wife and two kids. I made the mistake of telling him that I took a nap that afternoon. Oh, man. He was green with every napping. What you doing napping, man? You're a full-grown fucking man. Napping's for kids. He actually blurted that out. Napping's for kids. He tried to nap shame me. This is how jealous he was that, that I could get a nap and he couldn't. If you're married, enjoy it. It's just not for me. I am nobody's husband. I know that about myself. I'm not getting married. People try to scare you into it. I'm supposed to be going through a midlife crisis. I used to be afraid of that when I was younger. Sounds like a man gets to a certain age and terrible things start to happen. Well, it turns out that when you're single and you go through this midlife crisis, it doesn't feel like a crisis at all. <laughs> Got a new house, new car, great job. I'm dating women half my age. Feels more like a midlife Christmas, for all I can say. <laughs> Don't know who saw that and called it a crisis. Must have been somebody that couldn't pull it off. I think everybody should date somebody half their age. Women too, women, you know. A lot of women get mad at me, you know, why are you dating these young women? You know, there's a woman that's your age. Date your age. I hear that a lot. Doesn't work. I tried that shit. Don't work. Went out with somebody my age. It was a horrible experience. You know, she was 53. I was 55 at the time. And we're both just distracted, looking at younger people, walking around the place. You know. <laughs> Finally, we just looked at each other and went, we can do better than us, can't we? Yeah. We can. <laughs> Stop that nonsense right there. What is too young? I get that a lot. People are like, hey, she's too young for you, you know. Here's what I get all the time. You know, she's young enough to be your daughter. I'm like, yeah, but she's not my daughter. That's why I'm allowed to date her. You're tall enough to be my mechanic. You're fat enough to be my chef. Big damn deal. You see how silly it sounds when you apply it to other situations? It doesn't mean a thing to me. So she's young enough to be my daughter. She's also old enough to be my girlfriend. I check. High five. <laughs> give a damn how young she is or how old she is. I like her, she likes me. That's it. The woman I'm dating now is white. Yeah, thank you for getting quiet. That's a story to follow. Thank you. 
My sister had the same reaction, got real quiet. And my sister is a big hypocrite because she was cool with this woman until she found out that the woman I'm dating always dates black men. Now, for some reason, my sister thought that was a deal breaker. Couldn't wait to tell me. Thought she had a little secret. And called me in the kitchen. I want to talk for a second. Uh, doesn't it bother you that she always dates black men? Don't that bother you? I'm sitting there thinking, why would that bother me? I'm always going to be a black man. What's the problem? <laughs> I'm mad at her. I give her points for loyalty and dedication. How you folks doing? Good, all right, sit up straight. Look, cheers to David, come on. Yeah, dating interracially. It can be difficult, even these days it can, you know. Because we went on our first date and she said something that came off sounding kind of racist, but I forgave her because she was trying to make me laugh, so she's just nervous. She's sitting there and she's like, so you're a black man in his 50s and you got no kids. That's a miracle, isn't it? <laughs> and you know, I started to get mad, but then I started thinking, yeah, she's right, that is a miracle. How did I do I had to retrace my steps. How did I manage to not have kids being a black man? <laughs> That's how you retrace your steps. How did I manage to? I'll tell you how I did it, condom. That's how I did it. Yeah, That's how I keep from getting people pregnant. I use a condom whenever I have sex. And condoms work. They stop you from getting people pregnant. They worked for me all my life. I know I've heard these horror stories about people using condoms, still getting pregnant. It's always the same story, the condom broke. Which to me is not the whole story. Yeah, when a man tells me he broke through a condom using just his penis, I want to sit down for a second. Don't let me back up. Just from the beginning, tell me how you bust through this condom with your mighty penis. Just, uh, he's leaving something out. What manner of man are you? You breaking through condoms with your penis? <laughs> you can stick your whole damn leg in a condom. Have you seen how stretchy a condom is? If you got this problem, before you put the condom on, take out your penis and file off all the sharp edges around your penis. <laughs> Make it nice and smooth like a regular human penis. And maybe you won't tear through the condom like a Klingon. I've never seen a Klingon penis, but I've seen the head, and I can only imagine what the penis looks like. Any Game of Thrones fans here? Forgot to mention that. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who's not a Game of Thrones fan? I pity you, I pity you, I pity you. You're missing one of the best things in the world. So it's a fantastic show. I feel guilty watching it sometimes because I can't tell my brothers that I watch it. I got these brothers that are really, really militant, really black, you know. Very blacker than me, you know. My brothers are really super black, you know. <laughs> he doesn't understand. My one brother doesn't understand why I would watch a show that doesn't have black people in it, you know. He can't get over it, you know. He's one of those brothers, you know. It's not racist, but it is very racial. I will say that, you know. He can't stand it. Who's watching them shows for? You know, black people on it. So I tried to sit him down, get him to watch it one time, you know, thinking that he would be, you know, won over. We watched an episode that had old Castle Black on it, you know. All he had to see that it was a place called Castle Black with no blacks. He was done with it. What, was what kind of shit is this, man? What's going on? They pledged the black, no blacks. What's happening here? It made him even more militant. He can't stand that I like the show. And I'm the type of person, I don't watch a show because there's black people in it. I don't not watch it because there's no black people in it. I watch a show because I like the show. That's how I am. You know? He just won't let it go. So you an actor, would you be in a movie or a TV show that had no black people in it? And I'm like, no, because if I'm in it, 